Hey guys, this is Pro Man 111 back with Let's Play Mega Man Legends 2. Um, this recording, like the last one for some reason, was a pain in the ass to do because, you know, the first time I recorded it, you know, finished it, the mic wasn't even turned on, so make sure when you're doing things like that, that, you know, your mic is turned on and you are recording so you can avoid a lot of hassles. So I had to replay this, uh, first uh, segment of the game like three times because the second time the game just decided that it wanted to, you know, um, freeze up and I hadn't got a chance to save yet, but, um, what we're gonna do real quick is get started and go to, uh, Forbidden Island. Like I said, we were going to do in the last segment. Really quick, I'm gonna show you some other things you can do before you go there. You sure you want the want him to want Mega Man to to pilot the flutter considering what happened in the intro? Yeah, let's let's ask the person who you know the first time we piloted the flutter to help us when they were being a douchebag. Well, you know, I can defend myself with this, this gun on my arm, but you really can't. Not just yet, okay. Real quick, we'll go through the, the commands that she has for you, which we'll probably be going back to. Development room, basically, is where you make uh, new weapons, items, uh, you improve your special weapons, and that kind of thing. Development lets you create new items from the things you have. Um, with the rollboard and the old hover jets we found, uh, we can actually make a new set of shoes, jet skates, that actually lets you move faster than you would by formal running. And with these two items, we can't make anything just yet. If we don't have everything we need, she'll just give you a hand instead of the old weird, you know, legends form where either you fail or succeed and listen to that corny jingle or whatever, but um changing your weapons you have to change your special weapons from here. You can only have one at a time on uh, Mega Man at any given point. And in here is where you would upgrade your weapons. Like I said, but the better relationship you have with her, the more likely you are to get a discount. But you have to actually get the uh cutscene or the actual event to have the discount occur. Okay. And in that command, we will move all over the map, which that just a second, that cancels everything out, and then we can talk to her. Now, usually when you're talking to Roll, you'll either be doing something for her or giving her presents and things of that nature. Depending on how fast you how fast you put out the fires in the previous segment when you're uh, saving the flutter, this will either be higher or lower. I think this is the lowest it will get. And it will take a couple of cycles before it actually takes effect and you can go into there. Um, but for the time being, let's just go ahead and go to Forbidden Island. Real quick before you head out, you want to make sure, A, you have an energy canteen, at least with uh, uh, six. If you have six or five, if you have five uh, points of life, you just need something to recover at least once. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and move. In this game, it's a little different. Um... There's a map system, basically, where you need to go will be marked with a red triangle. And places you can go to will have a yellow triangle. Okay, so we'll just go to Forbidden Island. We'll descend into hell and just see what happens and what comes of it. Are you ready, Mega Man? Yep. Okay, here we go. Hold hatch open. Releasing docking clamp. Drop the ship away. Here you roll, I'm okay. Good. If you want 
want to come back to the flutter, just get into the dropship, okay? All right, then. Let's try and find Gramp's ship. It looks like it's drifting. I'm getting a reading north of your position. When you're ready, try heading north and see what you can find. In other words, it's rule saying go north without really being um, a, a douche about it. Now, she said you can go back to the uh, flutter if you need to by going back and talking to the dropship. And I do like how dropship, which is designed to go downward, can suddenly go back upward. You know what I mean? There's no cables, no nothing. Whatever. Um, first thing you'll notice is the visibility has been reduced slightly, but that's not really a big problem. But uh, that just gives the effect of the island being in a storm, so you'll be alright. Mega Man, be careful! It looks like there's something under the snow in front of you! These guys only have one attack, and that's a charge beam, which will most likely not hit you as long as you're not standing still, like I was, like a dork. As I said, if you have an S-Class or an A-Class license, the, 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 the enemies will drop more as any for you, so that'll help, and you'll find yourself with more money than you would at the same point in time if you were just playing with a B-Class license. Come on, man. They, they can be a little annoying at times because they tend to hop around and your buster shots tend to go underneath them, but just keep moving, you'll be alright. They won't tend to hit you. Keep moving, which I didn't keep doing. Yeah, this today is just not a good day for me. At least for this recording. I already taken way too many hits. The first time I actually recorded this, I had taken over hits, and I'm kind of burnt out, so... Hey, people. In cryokinesis. I'm picking up something. Go back live, check it out. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I was stupid and you know, skipped the scene. These people, they'll explain what happened here later on. For right now, I'll just let, leave it to your imagination. Pay attention to this person. What is it? Do you see something? I'm not picking up anything. Okay, that'll be explained later on in the game, so let's just leave that alone for now. And continue. Like I said, this in the previous recording I've been full of so many fails and so many re-recordings like annoying. A person or something up ahead. But how could that be? Okay, these reaper bots tend to leave you alone if you don't do anything to them. If you bump into them or shoot them. There you go, they got all mean and cranky. Basically, circling and shooting these things when they try to follow you, it'll be a good way to avoid damage for them. And they, they drop a, a nice amount of zenny for the area, so it's not a bad deal. And there's two. Generally, you'll find these later in the game, and if you find them in groups, uh, they will act all activate and try to kick your ass, so be careful with that. Now, this was a circle open. Oh, crap. Of course, you don't want to deal with more than one at a time, because they can be annoying at, after a while. If you have to just keep moving, keep circling, don't stand still, they will run you over and make you look like an idiot. No! Okay, with that, we sometimes you sometimes you'll reach any that you can't get to. If it's on a hill or something, basically you can just jump near it and it'll slide down. I don't know why that is, but um, and there's another there's a last one in this area. Like I said in the, uh, the, the Digger's Test, uh, Digger's Test, uh, guide, that the Buster Shake will help here, especially when you have low rapidity, so it'll quite help. Well, anyway, let's get going. Uh, is that supposed to happen? Hello there. Okay. This reaper bot only has one attack. It'll it'll circle you, but generally it'll come in for an attack. When it comes in for an attack, shoot it as it passes by. That's just pretty much nothing else to do. Um, sometimes you can shoot through that center ring, but it's pretty rare. 
you will find more of these later in the game, and they won't be boss-like. They'll actually be pretty easy to take down. They tend to fall over every time you shoot them, so... Keep moving, and you will not get hit. If you can trap it against the wall, that'll be great. And if you can not let it knock you out of the head, that'll also be perfect. And he also drops enemy as well. And then later, later in the game, there will be a normal enemy, and they tend to fall over when you shoot them repeatedly, so... They won't be as difficult as this one is. <coughs> Excuse me. A funny thing happened to me when I played this, like, after a long time, and I played on the s class I, I got killed out here, believe it or not. I was very irritated. You generally won't see the difficulty spike until you hit actually Forbidden Island. Or actually start going up, then it'll spike in the next one we will go to. There's a Reaver bot close by. Watch out! It's a trap! These guys basically only have one attack that will try and charge you basically. And of course they, they have a telltale sign of when they're gonna rush you, so it shouldn't be hard to avoid them. Of course, that one was nice enough to drop an energy cube for my fail. They, they drop a nice amount of zenny, so pick it up. It'll just be more money for you down the road. You cannot exit this area until you throw all the pack of germs in this area. And they, uh, that fence had disappeared right after I cut the glass one, so. Um, one of the few things I've I have I don't like about this game is the fact that Mega Man's voice actor, I don't like her too much. Yes, it's a female, but it shouldn't really matter. I like the actual voice actor for the uh, Legends 1. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Woo. Woo. Basically, they continue to spawn and charge down the, uh, the uh, ravine. See if you can get them to stop, get to that point, and uh, make it, to make it stop. Oh god, it did stop. <laughs> This is kind of hit or miss, but then they'll stop spawning. I kind of don't know when they will. Yeah, there's a way to deal with that. You can jump over the left or right legs, but whenever you see dead, just be aware that you're probably coming to a boss fight, and you probably want to save. So go ahead and do that now. What data basically does is you want charge your life and energy gauge, like your life energy and your special weapon energy if you're out, and she will give you pants if you need them. But can you see Grant's ship yet? According to my readings, it should be somewhere close by. I didn't know Grant's ship looked like a diamond. Wait, that's not a ship. Oh well. Um. So as we get up this hill, you'll notice this big, nice refractor. And no, you can't make money off of it. It would be nice, very, very nice. And there's like a weird tablet inside. You want, you want to go ahead and talk to it. Mega Man, what did you do? I'm picking up a massive energy surge. I think it might be a giant Reaper bot. Get out of there, Mega Man. Mega what'd you Man? say? Mega Man. Like Legend to one. Oh, wow. Well, hello there, Mr. Pachyderm. And this is a bigger version of the one we fought. First thing you notice is his life brigade is ridiculously long. Okay, basically, you want to keep circling it. It has several attacks, one of them being uh, uh, that one, for instance. Jump over it. So Shockwave will, will come out when he lands. Um, you can destroy his tusk. As the tusk gets shorter, the actual ice shard attack will get, start getting more wide and spreaded. So we can pull that. And he does have a desperation move that he'll only pull out when he's near death. Simple to avoid that, not much. Uh, difficult to avoid that. To avoid the ice shard attack, basically just run around it and jump whenever he does it. Jump while moving in a circle. That way the attack will not hit you. But like I said, as its trunk gets shorter, which you can either destroy or it will become shorter anyway, uh, the ice shard attack will become more spread and you'll more likely be hit if you're not moving.
Now you can tell this is going to be a pretty long fight. And that's one of the moves that he starts pulling out. I.e. the laser beam. Now as you get farther and as you get closer near death, that beam will actually start to zag and make it hard to read. Basically to avoid it, you can either jump away from it or you can actually uh, do a dodge roll. Which will help you avoid it. Dodge roll in this game is your friend because there is one point when that ro the roll is happening that you are invincible even if you're hit. Ouch. That could, that, like I said, that still can hit you even when you're doing that. Because it's spreaded. And as if, like I said, as, if, as either you destroy his trunk or, or as the battle progresses, his trunk will start getting shorter and shorter. Until he's about one fourth of his life remaining and he will like, try to start spamming laser beams, so watch out for that. Keep moving. Okay, now his trunk's just about gone. You can do that. See, you have a point of invincibility there when you're rolling, so do that. He will do that, eventually start doing that repeatedly, so be careful of that. So far he is being nice about it, not shooting it repeatedly. This boss isn't too hard, but he can kick your ass if you're not really paying attention to him. Yeah, so... You can, pr you can clearly tell I got nailed with it, but since I have that invisibility frame, yeah, it never touched me. Ow. I'm using you to dodge roll, you can tap left and jump at the same time, or you can tap R1 or L1 to do a dodge roll. It doesn't really matter which way you go, but sometimes it does. Common sense will dictate that, obviously. Ah, I just want to get the last hit before we fired it off. And there you go, folks. The big pack of gold went down. So when you go to the zoo next time, go shoot a go shoot a pachyderm with your Buster Cannon. <laughs> the storm, it stopped. Our Larcy blows. Oh, has it finally stopped? Oh, I thought we were goners for sure. You're getting old, Beryl. That was nothing. Look at me. I'm fine. Show off. For all that money you spent on it, you think this flying wash tub of yours would have held up better? <clears throat> well, accidents happen. If we were ready for them, we wouldn't call them accidents, would we? Hmm. Oh, oh, oh. How come those old fogies are so chipper, huh? My stomach. <laughs> Feels like it's been through a washing machine spin cycle. Uh, Teasel, look! What you say? That's done it. They woke her up. The Carbons have decided their own fate. 
This is because they've activated Mistress Sarah. You've done enough for them, Mistress Yuna. You are required to relinquish the keys to her. No, it's not enough. Why did the Master entrust that purifier unit with his genetic code? It was his job to hunt down and eliminate all aberrant units. So why did he become the greatest aberrant of all? There are still too many unanswered questions. Mistress Yuna, surely you have enough information to arrive at a conclusion. Think, Gats. What if the carbons, which the Master loved so dearly, were more important than the Master system? What then? What? The chances of such a possibility being true are non-existent. Are they? How can you be so sure? Uh-oh, we better get out of here. Agreed. Hmm, it appears that Miss Yuna still does not intend to give you access to the keys, Mistress Sarah. What is she thinking? Her logic is as mysterious as was the Master's. You know what you have to do. Yes, the directive of this unit is ensuring your safety. Very well. Hmm, one of the Carbon's ships. We must first recover the keys to the library. We can acquire and deal with the Master's genetic code sample afterward. By Carbon, she means humans. Understood. we end up stuck in here think about it teasel do you think they're just going to have a press conference with what's happened mm, and what was that blue fellow doing there anyway i don't like it enough one bit one thing's for sure now i'll get him this time or my name's not Shh, i'm picking something up so what you're saying is if you have possession of these four keys we can unlock the Mother Lode and save Mistress Sarah. Is that it? Correct. We are from the past, your ancestors. We are in a world we never made. We mean no harm. We simply desire to live out the rest of our lives as best we can. <laughs> of course, your troubles will be rewarded. With the keys, you will have access to technology that has long been lost to you. You would have the ability to make all the refractors you need. I understand. Leave finding the keys to us. We are not the only ones searching for the mother load. For your safety, I recommend that you stay here on the ship. Speak of the devil. Why, you? Were you spying on me? I thought we were supposed to be allies, aren't we? We're a unified front, a team. We won't let you hold out on us. Unified front? There's only two of you! Ah, but they are veterans, remember, Teasel? Not like some people I know who think the more people you have working for you, the better you are. Oh, and what about you, you? Now, now, Teasel, the more the merrier, right? Don't get so upset. We can dub them anytime we want. Hmm, I guess you're right. All right, then, let's get this show on the road. What we need to do is split up and take over any town that's got a large ruin nearby. Then we explore the ruins and find these keys. All right, boys. Look sharp. Let's go. I'll see you around. Come in, Bola. We've got work to do. Those two really get on my nerves. Pirates on the move already? That complicates matters. Oh, stop it. You can't fool me. Is it that obvious? Don't you think you're getting too old for playing around with pirates? <laughs> Find Mega Man. Bring him here. Yes, sir. You're not going to drag them into your escapades again, are you? Well, I just want to talk to them. They'll get involved with or without me. 
my my. And of course, we get dragged into this too. Huh? Would you believe it? Mr. Mega Man, sir. Mr. Blucher would like to see you. And with that, folks, we end this segment of Let's Play. We get involved into another big grand scheme of whatever you call it. But anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this segment, and I hope you have a safe New Year's Eve. Don't go out and do anything reckless now. Stay safe, okay? Hope you have able to fulfill all your wishes and all the things that you tried to do this year, and I hope the next year treats you well as well. This is Protoman111, signing out.